Admiral's Log. Date, May 29th, 1900. We've had our first few skirmishes with the German Navy. The Goliath was put to the test as she fought off the German battleship Saxon. She was victorious, as expected. The damage from the German torpedo will be repaired in a mere two months, thanks to our outstanding repair crews and our excellent dockyard facilities. The researchers are putting the final touches on the new upgrade to the coincidence rangefinders. These will allow for faster target acquisition, and this will prove to be especially valuable against torpedo boats and destroyers, which need to be dealt with quickly. I am also told that the new Krupp-1 armor type is expected to be ready for deployment later this year. The armor will give our ships an even better chance of surviving the rigors of combat. I'm very much looking forward to designing a new battleship, which includes this type of armor. Right now, it is back to the strategic map, as the German fleet still outnumbers us by 5 to 1. Let's get those numbers to shift. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to the second episode of the British Campaign. I'm in the process of rebuilding the British Navy. If you haven't seen the first part, then be sure to check out the link appearing now on screen. I highly recommend it. Because over there, I have mandated a couple of requirements to my new navy. Currently, I'm looking at a coastal defense mission as enemy raiders are closing in on a couple of our transports. It's a mere two transports, but we cannot allow the heavy cruiser Hertha to just engage it and destroy them. The Germans still have 13 heavy cruisers. Let's see if I can limit that to 12. Let's see if we're able to cut these guys off before they get to the transports. Fortunately, the Iron Duke is in position and has successfully positioned herself between the convoy and the heavy cruiser. The enemy smoke has been spotted to the west. So let's see where that smoke exactly leads to and how quickly the Iron Duke, with her 11 and 6 inch guns, can turn that heavy cruiser to German scrap. Once again, the German heavy cruiser has managed to disengage before completing its mission. So in essence, the Iron Duke was successful in saving the Cossack and the Ariadne, but it does highlight an issue. I cannot find the enemy. I need a faster battleship. So what I'm going to do is wait one month until that new Quinson's rangefinder is ready and create a heavy, well, not so much a heavy, but a fast battleship and have it go after the enemy at greater speeds. We have the Quinson's rangefinder too. It's going to make the main and secondary terror slightly heavier and more expensive, but gun aiming speed is plus 20%. That's really nice. Let's see. Ship design. I want this ship to be fast. It doesn't have to go far, but I'm thinking 27 knots. Multiple expansion engine. We're going to go with an induced boiler. I hope I can fit enough air intakes on this thing. Uh, 58%. <laughs> Yeah, it was never going to be that comfortable with this ship. Um, the issue is, I cannot fit any more of these air intakes. Nor do I have access to bigger ones at the moment. So that's going to be a bit of an obstacle. Now, when it comes to this ship, considering it's a close-in battleship, uh, this is the new interdictor. I'm going to make sure that it has ample protection. Especially anti-flooding. Citadel, maybe not even that much. Yes, it will go in close, but considering her armament's going to be fairly light, she's only going to have to be tasked with dealing with cruisers, I'm thinking that a couple of 9-inchers should be sufficient. But it will be backed up by a lot of 6-inchers. And I'm suspecting that this is going to make it quite, uh, well, quite efficient at taking down cruisers, such as the ones that keep harassing our transports. So the new coincidence rangefinder, electrical turrets, that's very nice, and enhanced reloading. I'm also going to go for heavy shells, just to do flat out more damage, and the 7.5% shell pen won't really hurt. Gun cotton and ballastite, more uh, muzzle velocity as well as shell pen. Some barbette armor. Um... I'm considering torpedo tubes as well. They're only 22 tons, at least, if I keep them at 15. But I'm not going to. I'm going to put them at 17. And this way, if I get close to an enemy battleship, I can still deliver some sort of a punch. Might not be a knockout punch, but it'll definitely damage the ship severely. Let's go for hydraulic steering. 
And that gives me about 100 tons to put on some more armor, which in this case is probably going to be structural, superstructure armor. I'm going to reduce the deck a little bit. I think aft and secondary belts, or aft and four belts, are going to be equally required. And three and a half, four, 2.8 aft, that should be fine. The last tons on the conning tower. Because this is going to be too heavy. Okay, there we go. That's the Interdictor class battleship. It can do 27 knots as opposed to the mere 21 knots of the Rodney. It is a bit of a, an uncomfortable ship though. It's going to be cramped. If I would want to upgrade that, I'm going to need to find 87 tons somewhere. Uh, I wouldn't know where. So we'll just have to save the design as is. These new interdictors, I want a few of them. Um, let's say I'm going to go with three of them. And this way I can station them in, for example, Dover, Portsmouth and Barrie. And have them intercept any of the cruisers as they might be harassing my ships. Next up we have a convoy. And it looks like this is going to be a bit of a one-sided fight. Because it is one heavy cruiser and a light and a transport that they're defending. Against six of our battleships. Let's do it. I'm very hesitant in a situation like this to go for auto-resolve. Because the chance of the AI still messing up the auto resolve and still making me lose more ships is exceptionally high. I find that auto resolve is terrible. Don't use it. It really won't do you any favors. Here we go. We have contact with the transport. Interesting to see that the transport turns out to be the ship that's actually the first target. Um, it serves me pretty well though, because this merchantman is my target. I need to kill 100% of the transports and there only was one. So it should be pretty easy to complete this mission quickly. Um, when it comes to this list here, it says something spotted the Iron Duke. And apparently that something is not the merchantman because that is as a different class. So the escorts are close. It just begs the question where? It also begs the question why is none of my battleships, there we go, successful at hitting the target. This 258 point damage hit was one result of a 4 inch hit and the 11 inch hit combined with seemingly a lack of bulkheads should very quickly finish off this fight. Of course, let me verify that. Standard bulkheads even. Right. Don't think it's going to save it, though. And, uh, yep. <laughs> well, that was doable. Um, I can end the battle here, and I think it would be classed as a victory. But I would actually like to sink their ships, their heavy cruiser and their light cruiser. The thing is, I don't think that my ships are fast enough. I think the Coronel was left to its own devices, and that the other ships have just left. So, I'm okay with just ending the battle here, and uh, still coming out ahead. Even though I gain no victory points from that. That's fine, I might still gain some uh, economic advantages. When it comes to monthly balance, I'm not looking that well. I'm costing 2.3 million per month, so that's a lot. But I still have an, a nice buffer to save that. Now, the research was done on the rangefinders. I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to take that off and get the armor quality boost to come up faster. And uh, our shipyards are still increasing, but that's going to take a while to get to. I am considering going with some form of a cruiser to scout, but I think that the new battleship should be sufficient. The torpedo launcher mark two. Nice. Okay. Better rotation, better reload speed and better accuracy. I wonder if I have a look at that new torpedo launcher, what am I going to see? This is the Mark II. This Mark II reloads in 326 seconds. Okay. What about the interdictor class? Where's your torpedo tube? <clears throat> I know you have it. Just that the game won't allow me to select it. 
because I cannot make changes to already existing ship classes. I really hope that that's something that they're going to change. Ah, there it is. 322 seconds. 322 uh, versus 326. <laughs> I can live with four seconds. Um, right. Not that important. Anyway, it is nice to have these torpedo launchers. What else? Hull protection could be useful. Torpedo protection 2 could very much save our ass, because torpedoes, I think, are currently one of the biggest issues that I have with my ships. I'm also considering getting naval comms. Increases the chance of favorable missions. Currently, I don't know what I'm researching. Um... And I'm hesitant to go with this until I get the armor quality improvement. Krupp armor 1. There we go. This is the one that I wanted to get. Because this is going to give me plus 70% armor strength. And that is a lot. It also means that the armor weighs less. And yes, it costs more. Sure. But with that increase in armor. With less weight. I can actually add a whole lot more armor. Instead of just a little bit. And that is one of the things that I was waiting for. So, back to the battleship designer we go. And we're going to make this one another... Let's say a follow-up to the Rodney class. And I think Vanguard is a good title. I'm going to give them a mixed... Uh, I'll say 24 knot speed. So I can actually intercept shit as opposed to... Kind of lag behind it. Look at this. This saves me a thousand tons. But... Cost? 6.4. 6.9. It's half a million, but I can live with that. It's perfectly fine. Anti-torp. Krupp armor check. Anti-flood. Citadel. Reinforced bulkheads. I want the better steam engine. Um, this could be useful. You do lose more speed when you're turning. But your turning rate goes up. So effectively, you turn faster. And that... Could save your ass in the event of a torpedo. 556, minimum turning circle. Let's go with the funnels. Engine efficiency should be, yeah, around 80. When it comes to the guns, I'm going to go with the... How about the 13 Mark IIs? It's heavy. These are 420, sorry, 767 tons per. I need to slow the ship down. Also, their reload is 86 seconds. That's a lot. Let's go with those again. Um, Rangefinder Coincidence 2. Enhanced loading. Electrical turrets. Okay, maybe not electrical turrets, because I still haven't added any secondary armament. Um, that's a bit of an issue, I suppose. Oh, here. What? I don't need all that range. Especially in this campaign, you really do not need all that range. So, 24 knots it is. We're going to go for not steam steering, but hydraulic steering. And secondary-wise... 7-inchers um, could be nice against cruisers, but for that I mostly have the 11s. Let's give them these enhanced torpedo launchers. Although, <laughs> based on what I've seen, they're not that stellar. They're all right, but they're not that stellar. Secondary guns. This actually could do very nicely against light cruisers. How many of those can I fit? Does this actually want to turn? Yeah, let's put them half overboard, see if anyone cares. I am the first sea lord. I decide what goes where and whether it fits or not. Um, I'd love to have the 12 inch Mark IIs. Those are not an option. Hold on, I can go side mounted guns. Wait a second. Oh yes. Now we're talking. Um, this means that I'm gonna have a ton of four weight offset, which is a bit of an issue. I can kind of offset that slightly, but not that much. This means that if I'm chasing a ship, which happens a lot, I can get these guns to fire. 
both of them. And I think that lines up very well with the term Vanguard. The challenge will be in getting the ship balanced. Because those two turrets are weighing a lot. I could put a 12-incher on the stern, I guess. So just balance it out, or maybe even a 13. Just a really heavy punch on the stern. But it means that the more different armaments you have, kind of the less useful they become. Because I believe you get a debuff to your range finding. Also, if I put 7s here... Yeah, that also sets off the weight issue. And if I remove that... And that... Then I only have a weight of set of 2.3. And I can still add a bit more to armor. Which now gets an armor buff to 72%. Which means... So 10% is 0.9, so I get an effective 6, 6.5 six inches of armor extra. Let's see how heavily armor, I, how heavily I can armor this ship up. That's a bit much. Guns. The 13 inch ideally wouldn't take that much fire. The 10, yeah, the, the 11s would. There. I like this. The Vanguard class. I like this a lot. Okay, um, save the design. I want to order a few of those boys. I will have three. Thank you very much. It's probably going to depress my finances even more. <laughs> That's not great. Um, let's take the research priority off of that. And I still have it here, which is fine. The rest, 23, 26, six months for the 12 inch. I could buff that to three. And gun layout, large side guns. I'm not very interested in that. Turret mechanics, however, possibly. Um, all this submarine stuff, I'm just going to ignore. Same as mines. It's not in the game yet. Let's go for better fire control. So we have our priorities. Control station, big guns, and maneuver warfare. Give me something to shoot. Ah, new tech. The cruisers can now go up to 12,500 tons. Uh, which means that my shipyards can sustain that. It's just that I really don't want to be using cruisers. We have the Goliath, once again, against the Prinzregent Leutpolt at 16,068 tons. It's one of their eight battleships. Let's put it down. We've made contact with the enemy... The Goliath now has a trained crew, which means that her accuracy has been improved. Sadly, she does not yet benefit from that improved coincidence rangefinder. She's still rocking the older stereoscopic. But with a trained crew and a fairly large target, I think we can still get up to some decent accuracy. The issue, however, remains that our ability to do damage with the 11-inch gun against the German battleships is not that great. So once again, I might have to do some fairly close-in maneuvers. Let's slow the ship down already. Let's go to half speed. It's going to boost my accuracy. Let's go to close-in and prepare a torpedo attack. As well as allow my ship more time to react against their torpedo. Which will inevitably be coming my way at some point in the near future. They get that 500 meter range on me. Let's see. Angle chance, 48.7% chance to pen, and it's going up versus 21. This is why you angle your ships. If you do not angle your ships, your ships tend to be a lot more easy to pen. Whereas I now, if you look at it from the Prinz Regent Leutpolt, I'm now firing, or they're firing. Hold off on that. Ooh, that was close. If they hit me, it's going to just ding off the side of the ship. Whereas the Leutpolt is not... Well, she's a little angled. She's turning away. So now it's time to load the high explosive. Interesting that it's once again the Goliath that gets to do this battle. 
This is one of our 12 battleships, and it is the one that I thought was in repairs. But apparently, <clears throat> she's already ready for another action. Excellent. We have some fire on that ship, but once again, they are pretty well protected against that. They have a green level of crew, however. Damage the main tower, that's a good start. The more you damage that, the more their accuracy goes down. Damage the secondary tower. Their superstructure has 1.1 inches of armor. They got that plus 48 armor quality, and so do I. So that get, that boost on the Vanguard class to 70% is really nice. That's going to make for a lot more effective armor. Meaning that the German battleships, the current generation that they have fielded, is going to struggle to do damage against my ships. Probably struggle a lot. Now, if you could just turn starboard, that would be wonderful. Because you're doing 19 knots. I'm only doing... Yeah, I'm going to increase speed a little. I need to make sure that I get closer, because the Prinz Regent is still at almost full speed, 18.5. She can do 19.1 in ideal circumstances, but with damage and stability, she won't do that. We have 6% sorry, 4.5% accuracy versus my 13%. Long live the crew training for the British. Increase the flank. It's going to reduce my accuracy, but increase it due to just getting closer. There's more fire, but there's just one compartment on the stern. It's not going to win it. What I have not yet worked out with the campaign is how the game calculates the crew level. Is this because the Goliath has already been in a battle? Or is this potentially because I have had more time with the monthly crew training to get this crew up to a better standard? I'm not sure which one it is. It is nice to see that the crew is doing better, but I'm still not sure what causes this training level. My standing theory is that the ship being in combat is not really that important. Now, this guy should be slowing down. 15.6 and holding. She might at some point shit out a torpedo. The Goliath is at maximum speed. This is why I find engine efficiency so important. Because if you have a ship and you want to speed it back up after having slowed down, for example, to dodge a torpedo, then you need that engine efficiency. And it's going to make a world of difference whether your engine efficiency is a mere 25 to 50%, or if it's going to be in the vicinity of 80%, at which point you'll be vastly faster. We're almost in her torpedo range. So far, I have done 737 points of damage to her, Versus nine that the Prinz Regent has been able to do in return. The Goliath, now going bow in, is... Well, she's not impenetrable. But even the main towers... <laughs> even the main towers are very hard to hit. I am officially in torpedo range, but I think I'm caught between two torpedo arcs. The torpedo arc here from the stern and the starboard side. So... The Prince Regent's going to have to make a choice. Do I turn, which she does, and prepare for a torpedo attack? Or do I keep going away from the target as quickly as possible? And she has elected to go with the torpedo attack. There it is. It's just one launcher, though. I think it's the starboard one. Goliath is slowing down. I'm going to have even less response time when it turns to port and shits out the aft launcher. Which I'm expecting kind of now. Because I'm very much inside of her torpedo arc. If she turns, but she might have trouble turning with that damaged rudder. Let's go 
back to high explosive. Slow down. Goliath will be right with you. Aggressive launch. Destroyed torpedo. Excellent. One thing that the game could improve upon is say which torpedo launcher got destroyed. Because if it's the stern launcher and I don't know that, then I can fairly safely approach the ship without concern. But I wouldn't know it. My suspicion is that the bow launcher, for example, is perfectly intact, because that is not something I can effectively hit. Casemate destroyed. Did you also lose a secondary? Yeah, this one's scorched. This one's scorched. They're definitely losing secondaries. Yeah. So which casemate gun did I destroy? Hmm. So far, it's once again incredibly unbalanced when it comes to damage. 1.1 thousand damage versus 23. The Germans, even with hard difficulty, do not know how to fight. Or rather, the AI doesn't. Come on, buddy. Are we really going to have it out? Accuracy 57%. There we go. Increase the flank. Destroy torpedo launcher again. Could be the same one. Destroyed funnel. Perfect. Now we hit the engines. If possible, and the ship will slow right down because she cannot speed back up again. Well, and she cannot speed back up again. Oh, and there goes her superstructure. Her main tower is dead. Which means that her damage control is reduced. Her crew is dying. They're 20% down versus my 1%. And with that, her secondary guns. Oh, hold on. I think I got all torpedoes. Because they got 0% on the torpedoes for battle stations. Which, if I'm reading that right, means that they simply don't have any crew requirement. Because they're all dead. That was my torpedo. Didn't quite work out. Secondary tower. I would love to destroy the secondary tower as well to further decrease their uh, accuracy. Because look at this. I'm right behind them. 700 meters out. And the, yet their accuracy is 15%. My accuracy is 67%. And this is with the same level of range finding. It's just that they got a coincidence one and I have a stereo one. Like Jaws, we creep up on the Prince Regent. Look at that. Close encounters of the battleship kind. Let's turn to port. Bring the starboard launcher to bear. And get that starboard torpedo launcher to inflict serious damage against her stern. Potentially engines. That would be very nice if I can get that. Ooh. Tar starboard torpedo launcher away and impacted with the Prince Regent. She's still not returning fire with the torpedoes, any of them. Leading me to believe that she just doesn't have any. Destroyed the main tower, destroyed the second funnel. She has been able to do some damage against the Goliath, sure. 140 versus 2700. I'll take those ratios any day. Very much looking forward to trying the new Vanguard class. That's going to be a fantastic ship. I hope. <laughs> I really hope. That new Vanguard class with those two turrets up ahead also kind of opens up the way to having a uh, ship in a not line ahead but line abreast formation. So you have your ships all side by side. And that way you can still bring four 11 inch barrels to bear against the enemy. They've lost 27% of their crew. Interestingly, their damage control is still very low. It's not really that impacted. Um, main guns are still fully functional, but secondary guns, far less so. Oh, sorry, this is skills. This is crew level. This is uh, control. So they got at, they're at 94% of damage control ability. If I can pass this ship... 
fire the starboard launcher into the target's bow, I can sink it. Starboard torpedo away. She's turn. Oh shit, she still has a torpedo? What? But this is zero. What the hell? Well, that's gonna hurt. Ow. It's not the first time the Goliath got torpedoed. Probably wouldn't be the last. But it will be the last that the Prinz Regent has done it. Because she is done. So that's another victory to the Goliath. Chalking up two kills out of two encounters. And there we go. 1695 points gained. Not bad. Not bad. Meaning that I have 12 battleships, although one of them is being repaired. And the Germans only have 7. It's going to take 2 months to get the Goliath back up to fighting strength. Alright guys, that is it for this episode. Definitely join me for the next. Subscribe if you haven't already, because I upload these very, very frequently. And I hope that you are enjoying the new ship designs. We are going to see these ships come out in a while. It's not going to be the next episode, probably, because it's going to take 16 months. It's going to be the Vanguard, the St. Vincent, and the Redoubtable. So join me then, and make sure that you see the Vanguards in action. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon for more.